first and foremost, I'm a mother of three. I have a daughter of 10, a daughter of seven, and a little boy of two, which is very special and important to me. Um, as a profession, I'm a, a professional musician, part of Sterling EQ, and we perform across the world. I also run my own entertainment business, and I'm a great lover of the ocean, and I can't get enough of swimming in it. <laughs> so I like to swim further and further every time. <laughs> I think that swimming and being fit is the most important part. So when you're doing what you love, which for me is swimming and music, um, you can you can manage the rest. But I must say sometimes it becomes very busy with the three kids and the business and so on. But I make a point of swimming an hour at least every day so that I'm fit and I'm able to handle the rest. I actually only started swimming after school at the age of 18. Um, I was always a water baby when I was a child, but I never really got into the whole swimming thing. I was very lazy. So um, when I went to study music, I decided I needed to do something to give myself a sort of a more balanced lifestyle. I got into the pool. It was hell to start with. It was extremely difficult to finish a few lengths, but um, I kept at it and I, I simply got addicted to it. No one outside really inspired me. What inspired me was the water and, and the challenge of going further each time. So the rest was history, really. <laughs> basically addicted to swimming distance after about a year um, and I was just doing it in the pool every day three or four kilometers um, and people at the pool started telling me listen you've got an amazing stroke you should try maybe try Athlon and I was like no thank you I can't run and I don't wish to cycle <laughs> so and then someone suggested me um, to me entering an open water race and the only race I could find was 12 kilometers across a bay in Cape Town and I thought that's crazy firstly who can swim 12 kilometers? Um, sharks, cold water. But I, I suppose the adventurous side of me <laughs> decided I'll go and do it. Um, and I got into the water there, I was very nervous. And five minutes later, I felt the rhythm and the passion of the ocean. And I, I found my happy place. Um, I finished the swim in about three hours, I think. And I was like, what? I want to swim more. I don't want to be done with this. And from there on, I just found new swims and I discovered this amazing, um, sport and meet met amazing people and yeah embarrassingly I haven't really done much short, short distance swimming for me short distance is three three kilometers even five kilometers that feels like a sprint and I never really enjoy it because I can't you know my, my head doesn't have time to switch off and get into the to the rhythm and get into my zone um, so I, I much prefer the longer distance. It's really just for me it's about connecting with the ocean and connecting with the water and connecting with my soul and um, that takes a bit of time. So um, my favorite distance is actually anything over 15 kilometers. It almost feels to me like I, I go into a next gear, a very lovely gear, when I've um, topped 10 kilometers. So it's, it's incomparable really. It's just that zone that's very difficult to describe to someone who maybe doesn't do it and hasn't swum long distance it's you know you um you really connect with your soul and it's like your soul is swimming ahead of you and your body is just always going ah yes this is where i'm happy <laughs> I had done a lot of, of extreme long distances and extreme swims and my big dream um, about 10 years ago was to swim across a bay in Cape Town which um, only one or two people had done at the time. Many people have failed trying. It's 36 kilometers and it's across a bay called False Bay. Um, it's the white shark capital of the world and the currents are extremely unpredictable there and it's just, it's a bit scary. So I sort of obsessed about doing that bay and, um, and I, I attempted it once and five hours later I had hypothermia so I was unconscious and I, I failed which obviously just inspired me even more to go back and do it so when I did it a year later when I finished the 36 kilometers it took me about 11 hours um, that feeling of elation and achievement and just just feeling hey false bay in me we like this now <laughs> so I think that one stands out yeah really 
teaches you to to respect the ocean and not to swim when it's not right. I mean, the first time I tried, the water was 13 degrees. I was skinny. I didn't have any body fat on me. There, there was no way I could swim 36 kilometers in that. Um, so when I went back, um, you know, I really waited and I, I, I practiced some patience. <laughs> I waited for the right day and it was a phenomenal swim. I really enjoyed every moment. I suppose the most challenging swim for me was the English Channel. Um, because I don't like cold water, the English Channel isn't particularly beautiful, <laughs> you know. Here in Bodrum the, the water is just clean and clear and deep blue. The English Channel is a little bit, mm, you know, you know there's a lot of shipping traffic and, and it's just not the most tropic. Um, and I really, really felt the cold, but fortunately I survived it and I made it to France, but I didn't feel like, yeah, you know. In retrospect, 10 years later, I've, I know that having done the Channel was amazing and it's meant so much for me but on the day it was it was 12 hours of nitty-gritty <laughs> Uh, when I started a family um, 10 years ago, I, I had to really tone down on the open water swimming because it's so time consuming and the traveling and everything. And it's so all about me, you know, it was all about my enjoyment and sort of my achievements and so on. Um, when I, <laughs> the ocean was really calling my name again and I really wanted to go back, but I was struggling because I felt like it was almost a selfish thing, you know. Um, so I decided that if I was going to go back to open water swimming, I made a deal with my Myself. Um, if I was going to do big swims and extreme swims that, that have the um, potential of creating media awareness and so on, I was going to use that media um, for a good cause. And that's why I started Swim for Hope. Um, my first Swim for Hope was around the Cape of Good Hope, which is extremely sort of treacherous and lots of sharks and nine kilometers ice cold water. So it, it, you know, it was quite, quite an interesting swim. Um, and through that, I created just a lot of attention and I decided I was going to divert that attention to a good cause. So I've swum for a few causes. Um, the last one I did now from France across the bay via Monaco to Italy, 21 kilometers last week. Um, that one was for a new organization called Music Kids where um, the, the, it's teachers who teach children from the township, which is a very poor area in Cape Town, to play the violin, uh, which is just so inspiring for me as a musician as well. Children with really very little hope otherwise um, getting the chance to do something that makes them special and also something that really um, inspires them, inspires their whole family and, and is amazing for the brain development as well. So I'm hugely inspired by them and I'm very happy to be raising funds and awareness for them. So many people are doing amazing things, really, really, especially these days. When I started with open water swimming 15 years ago, it was a very niche little sport and everyone was sort of doing the same thing. Everything I did was new, so that was quite interesting. But now there's amazing people. They're swimming in ice, they're doing cross continents all over the place, they're swimming the Pacific. So, so there's amazing swimmers and doing it for amazing causes as well. Um, each of them deserve a lot of credit. But for me, I'm inspired by the ocean. I just love being there. I love feeling the rhythm of the ocean. And every day is a, is a different feeling, really. Every day the water is new. And, and I just love sort of connecting with it and feeling, yeah, ah, today this is what we're doing, you know? So um, I love it. And I love, actually, I, I just love the movement. And I love it when it's rough and rough and real. <laughs> Well, my favorite spots for swimming, I'm going to have to add Bodrum to the list. Um, the water here is just absolutely phenomenal. I also really enjoyed um, swimming in Sardinia. I swam um, the Bonifacio Straits from Corsica to Sardinia. Any spot on the Mediterranean, really, um, I can't complain. I love warm water um, and beautiful clear water. So another spot in Italy is Spotorno. I did a beautiful race around the island there a couple of years ago. And it's just, you know, you're just swimming with the fish. Just everything. <laughs> Ah, good question. I need to do a little bit of swimming back in South Africa again. I've been very spoiled because I've been swimming in the Med and South Africa the water is a little bit more dangerous and a little bit, well, a lot colder. Um, so I don't like doing the coldest of the cold, but um, there's a bay in South Africa that I haven't crossed. It's called Nelson Mandela Bay. So I'm thinking about that one. It's a bit sharky, but we'll deal with that. <laughs> Um, and otherwise, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'll, I'll obviously be back here in the Northern Hemisphere next year, looking maybe at, at 
Switzerland and definitely Italy. I've got some roots in Italy, so there's always something to find to do there. This was my second time in Turkey. Um, the first time I was here with Sterling EQ, we were performing at the World Travel Awards a few years ago in Antalya. Um, but we were really only in the resort and it was very touristy, so we didn't really experience the actual Turkish spirit, I would say. Um, this time around, it was absolutely amazing. I spent uh, two days in Istanbul, really seeing how people live around here, being blown away by the, by the sheer size of it. It's, wow, you know, we don't have anything like that in South Africa. Um, and spending time here in Bodrum with, with fellow swimmers and organizers, it's been really inspiring. I mean, the Turkish people are <laughs> something else. They're just so passionate and they're hardworking. They work hard, they play hard, they swim hard, and it's all about just being together and, and the passion in here, the passion for the ocean. So I've really, really enjoyed it and I'd love to be back. Yes, the Aquamasters organization is very special and they're very close to my heart now. Um, it's a very ambitious organization. I must say, I've never seen anything like this. They just add on and add on and they do everything with quality and professionalism. Um, they, they truly cover each point and cover each corner. Um, they looked after us extremely well. I must say, um, myself and my band, we, there was never a dull moment and we were never alone either. Um, we were looked after so well and, and well entertained. Um, and I think they've achieved something absolutely phenomenal, really. Um, there have been challenges with the weather and, and all sorts of things, but to put an event like this together, one weekend with how many swims? Seven, eight swims and just a thousand medals and everyone's a winner here. Whether you did your best time, whether you were first, it doesn't matter really. Um, and you get that feeling, you get that feeling of a family and just the fact that everyone here wants to be here and it's 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 for the same cause and, and really that really resonates with me because it's about being together in the ocean, doing your best and, and sharing the love. So yeah, I, I share the love for Aquamasters. Thank <laughs> you.